Good morning. I guess it's good morning. Shouldn't it be good morning? Good morning. I did a video here a couple months ago uh, about how Mary fit into my life. And now I'd like to do a little bit of vocation about how Mary fit into my vocation. If you remember in my other video, I talked about my mother being a lady of charity and how much she uh, impressed upon us at caring for others. It was just something that mom told us about. And there was one time that I'll never forget, and my brother was with me, and he doesn't will never forget it either. Uh, I was guess I most likely was about, oh, I would say sixth grade, or somewhere in that area. And mom had a um, basket for Christmas that she wanted to give to some poor, the poor people. The ladies' charity gave out about 300 baskets a year at Christmas time, and nobody knew where these folks lived. And mom says, well, I know where they lived, and I'll get um, my boys to take it down to them. So they lived in a farm about a mile north of where our farm was. And um, so mom took us over. I wasn't driving yet. Mom took us over, my brother Gene and I, and we had a basket and a box. The basket was full of food, and the box was full of toys. And mom said, I would really, there's where you're going to go, boys. And she pointed down into a field, which looked like to us, it might have been a pig sty at one time, a place they kept pigs. It wasn't that, but it was way down in the field, about 300 yards. And there was no way to get there except walk. So we started down there, and I remembered, I was remembering to Jean, I said, I hope they don't have a whole bunch of dogs. And just about that time, here come about four dogs out from underneath the, the building. And, uh, and about three kids come out the door. And then this lady, in, literally in tatters, or the word, she just was, she wasn't expecting company. And we said to her, this is a gift from our ladies of charity for Christmas for you and the family. And she said, we're not allowed to take gifts. My other husband, who's out squirrel hunting right now for supper, says we're not allowed to take gifts unless Mrs. Maud says it. And Miss Maud is, was the teacher there in the little town. And I said, Miss Maud did send them. And so, happening to know Miss Maud was a lady of charity, and this was from the ladies of charity, I figured that's the way it worked. We gave these to them. The kids were just delighted because they, the toys were all in there for them and they were just having a grand time. And the lady was obviously delighted with the basket too, with the food in it. And so we turned around and walked back up the hill to the, where mom was parked. Mom couldn't walk very well, so she couldn't get down that far. And about halfway up there, Gene and I were talking about, you know, that's the kind of thing I'd like to do with the rest of my life. That's what I told him. And he still remembers that. Um, caring for the poor was something that was important to me. And so I decided to do that. Went to the seminary in 1949. And then came up here to the seminary here in Perryville. And I would visit the shrine absolutely every day. Usually after breakfast, I would visit the shrine. The breakfast was just down the next building. And then I would come over and visit the shrine daily. About three years into this, I was finishing up my philosophy going into theology. I'd taken vows. I was a Vincentian now, full-blown full Vincentian. I'd been through the novitiate, taken vows, and visiting Mary was a daily part of my life. She was a part of my life. Mary's blessing to me. But the girls looked awfully pretty at those days. I was now finishing up college. The girls looked awfully pretty. And I had kind of decided I'm more, in a, I'm more of a mechanical person. I'm more of a, of a math teacher. I'm a chemistry teacher. I don't know if I want to do this priesthood thing. And I came over here and I was right there in that chair, just right here in this shrine. And I sat there for about an hour and just telling mom in tears, you know, Mom, I don't think I'm going to keep doing this. I think I'm going to quit. And I remember distinctly hearing, not hearing actually, but actually 
Our Lady was talking to me saying, no, uh -uh. you come back, we'll talk about it. And so I came back here for, for a, a, a significant amount of time, every day, talking to Our Lady, saying, help, I need help, I need help. And she was there for me. She was there to the point that I actually kind of felt her being with me. And she told me, your life is going to be dedicated to the poor through teaching. Now, John, get on with it. So I must say that Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal has been a part of my vocation, a part of my life, a part of my vocation. And then throughout my teaching, I prayed for her. We always said, O Mary, can see without sin after every class that we had. Um, and I can remember, I had taught for 25 years in high school and college. And um, the community elected me provincial, which was so bad I'd almost fainted. And I remember telling her, Mom, this is worse than anything I've ever done before. I'm going to have to be in charge of the community of, at that time, about 200 men. And I can remember her just flat out telling me, it's, I'm with you, do it. So Our Lady has been so much a part of my life. Now here I am, you know, a retired priest. Well, not really retired, but at least supposed to be retired. Working for the Diocese of Springfield Cape, traveling an awful lot of miles. And I say the rosary, and I say to her, come on, Mom, we're doing this together. So the miraculous medal in this old priest's life has been his life. And I cannot tell you how important it is. And just trust her, because she's always there for us. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Amen.